Hey everybody, welcome to Beaming Knots and today we're going to look at the summary of the poem No Men Are Foreign, a poem by James Kirkup. Setting of the poem This poem is set in the arena of the human mind. The human mind is very susceptible to being manipulated. No child is aware of xenophobia, which is the fear of foreigners from birth. This fear is in fact instilled into the human mind as the child grows older and reaches adulthood. This fear is instilled by military and religious groups. The poet's attack is directed specifically against the armies of nations that fight with other nations on the basis of wanting ownership over disputed lands. He says that such armies teach us to hate people who have been descended from the same ancestors as us and who are therefore our own brothers. By being manipulated through the brainwashing techniques of such armies, we end up endangering the survival of the human species on earth and the very destruction of the world as we know it. That is why the poet encourages the readers to push xenophobia out of their minds. Summary lines 1 to 4 Remember no men are strange no countries foreign beneath all uniforms a single body breathes like ours the land our brothers walk upon is earth like this in which we all shall lie The poem consists of 20 lines in total. These lines are not divided into stanzas. However, they are divided into meaningful segments here for the purposes of this summary in order to make the poem easier to understand and follow. This poem is written in the first person, hence we can assume that the speaker of the poem is a poet himself. In these lines, the poet tells his readers that men are not different from each other simply on the basis that they hail from separate countries. They might fight for the army of this nation or that one but underneath the uniform they are all essentially similar your opponent army soldiers live and breathe just as you do most fights between the men of one country and another result from disputes over which from disputes over which piece of land belongs to which nation however all the land on earth is the same moreover every man will have to lie in the earth at one time or the other that is all men have to die and all pieces of land are potential graveyards in that they can occasion a war for their occupation summary lines 5 to 8 they too aware of sun and air and water are fed by peaceful harvests by wars long winter starved their hands are ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own in these lines, the poet provides further evidence of the unity of man. He says that those who hail from countries other than our own also depend, like we do, on sun and air and water for their survival. They too have seen periods of peace and periods of war. In times of peace, they have had the assurance of a square meal every day, just like us. Again, just like us. War has been a long winter to them when food is scarce and every moment brings the dread of an approaching famine. They look just like us and are descended from the same ancestors as we are. Summary lines 9 to 12. Remember, they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep and strength that can be won. By love in every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. In this stanza, the poet entreats his readers to keep in mind that the fact that our opponents sleep and wake just like we do and follow the same pattern in life as us. Every human being has an inner resource of strength that they can use to help their fellow beings. However, that resource can only be unlocked by following the path of love. Only when we love someone can we stand up for them. That is why it is absolutely necessary for every man to love his fellow beings without creating divisions amongst them. 
Despite the differences between various nations, there is one thing that they all have in common. The common people live in the same kind of life everywhere. Therefore, you can recognize the presence of that life no matter where you travel in this wide world. Summary lines 13 to 15. Let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispose us, betray, condemn. In this stanza, the poet protests against the efforts of military and religious groups that encourage us to wage wars against those of other persuasions. The poet believes that those groups are misguiding their followers. They are asking their followers to hate people without realizing that it is our own brothers that we must hate. This is a form of self-destruction of the poet. Any hatred that we may harbor for any member of the human race is tantamount our betrayal towards the species and our condemnation of its future. If we kill people of any other nation, we are in fact endangering the human species as a whole and its survival on the earth. Summary line 16 to 17. Remember, we who take arms against each other, it is the human earth that we defile. In this stanza, the poet provides further implications of war. He says that if we, the guardians of the earth, were to die out as a result of the war, then there would be no one left to take care of the home that our ancestors had passed down to us. We would then have nothing to pass down to our own future generations. Summary lines 18 to 20. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no country is strange. In this stanza, the poet compares wartime with hell. In war as in hell, there is fire and smoke everywhere. As a result of this, the earth is becoming poisoned. The very air that we breathe is becoming impure and will not be able to sustain human life for much longer. That is why the poet encourages us not to wage war on our fellow men thinking that they are foreigners and their countries are unlike our own. Central Idea The poet believes that war is caused by false beliefs of people who have ceased to believe in the essential unity of man. These are xenophobes who believe that a man hailing from a different country is to be hated and discriminated against. However, the poet assures his readers that a man is just the same everywhere. He experiences the same joys and sorrows and has been descended from the same ancestors. Therefore, he is justified in asking his readers to do away with the xenophobia and expel it from their minds and hearts. Conclusion if readers are willing to read between the lines of no men are foreign, they will see that the poet is not just teaching us a lesson or warning us about the endangered future. He is also showing us a contrary picture and giving us a message of encouragement. He is showing that what an easy solution there is to our problems. We must learn simply not to hate and then our world would be a better place.